Welcome to the Fox One Corp series of training videos. I'm Dave Springford. Please visit me online at www.foxonecorp.com for all your glider supplies. In this video, I want to take a look at the various methods available within the LX flight computers for ETA calculation when you're on task, the parameters that will affect the calculated ETA, and then I want to take a look at how we can move within an assigned area task or a turn area task how we can move the turn point to extend or reduce our distance to adjust our ETA so we don't come in under time or too far over time. So on the screen what we have is we have a flight that's loaded and the glider is down here and we're approaching the last turn area. This turn area is set to a 20 kilometer radius and what we can see is right now we're 55 kilometers from that zone we're doing reasonably well. We've averaged 106 kilometers per hour so far on this task. But if we take a look up at the top, we can see we are currently projected to be 10 minutes under time. And we have an hour and 21 minutes remaining out of an original four and a half hour long task. And to the center of this turn point where the task is currently set, and then back to home or the finish line, we have 186 kilometers left to go and to do that in an hour 21. So the first thing I want to take a look at is what parameters affect this ETA calculation. So we're going to go across to the setup menu and within the setup menu, we're going to take a look at the Q and H and reserve page. In here, we can see this bottom box ETA calculation based on. And right now it's set to McCready. That means that the time calculated is going to be based strictly on McCready theory. Climbs at the climb rate of the McCready you have set and glides based on the McCready you have set. In addition to that, it's also going to take into account your safety altitude that you have programmed in and any elevation for the finish height as well as winds. All right, so those are the basic things that are going to be taken into account. You'll notice right now I have safety McCready set to zero, so there is no impact of safety McCready on my ETA calculation. Right now it's only calculating based on my speed to fly McCready, climbing to the height required by that McCready, and gliding home. A couple other options we have under this ETA calculation besides McCready, there's also average vario, so you can use that and it will use your uh, your current average vario. We have average speed and vario, so your task speed over a uh, given interval and your vario. We can use average speed and McCready. So these are the options. We'll leave that at McCready because it's the easiest one to conceptualize. So with this, we'll close and we'll go back to our task. Now we can see that we're going to be nine minutes under time. Currently have McCready set to four knots. So with McCready at four knots, if we fly to the center of the last zone, we're gonna come in nine minutes early. And if we look at our statistics page, we can see that our last four climbs, uh, 3.8 knots and 2.9, 2.9, but those were very small climbs. So with this 3.8, the four knot McCready for the day is pretty reasonable at this point. Move the point to which we are navigating within the zone. The first thing we can see in the zone, I have the ISO line set up and I have the coloring set up. So anything inside the blue, if I turn anywhere in there, I'm going to be early. If I turn on this transition between blue and red, I'm going to come home with uh, zero if I fly perfectly according to McCready theory. And if I fly into this red part of the zone, now I'm going to start to be over time. So obviously right now, we can see in a couple ways, nine minutes early, and I'm also within the blue line, so I'm going to be early. So what we want to do is we want to move that turn point. So we'll go up here to the menus, and we'll click on the move button. When we do that, it takes us into this task move page, and we can see it's on the turn point to which we are navigating. This black line down here is the track vector coming from 
the glider. So that's currently the direction I am heading. So depending whether I'm heading that way because there's cloud streets, I may want to move my point over to this way, or maybe I'm just in a little bit of a dipsy doodle and I'm heading that way, but it looks homogeneously good anywhere in the back of the zone. So obviously where we decide to move is going to be based on what we see ahead of us in the sky. But the first thing I want to point out is that there's this jump button. And if we use the jump button and we click on that, what it does is it jumps from the center to the minimum point. Obviously, we don't want to do that because that's going to put us 18 minutes under time. If we hit jump again, it jumps it to the maximum point. And with the maximum point, we can see I'm still going to be one minute under time. So obviously in this task, I didn't take enough distance in the first uh, few turn point zones because even if I max out this one, I'm going to come in one minute early. This task was actually flown as an assigned task. It wasn't an area task. I've just put areas on here to help demonstrate the uh, principle of moving the waypoint zone. So jump, if I press it one more time, it'll take it back to the middle. So we can quickly move it to the minimum point and the maximum point using the jump and see what effect that will have on the ETA. We can now also move the point by using the lower left and right knobs. I've jumped this back to the middle, and now we can take a look at how we can move this point manually. There are a couple options up here on the soft key. You can see this says longitude and latitude. And if I press that again, I get a distance and bearing. So I can move either kind of left, right, up, down, or I can move radially. So you can see this red line here, that's the radial we'll move on. And then I can push the point up and down that radial. So this is what I use typically as I use this distance and bearing method. So if we go to the lower right button here and we rotate it clockwise, we can see it's dragging the point towards me along that line. Obviously I need to go further out, so I'll rotate it counterclockwise. And by rotating counterclockwise, we can see that this is being pushed further away from the center of the turn point, which is what I want. So I want to push this a fair ways out. We'll push it just past the word Chatsworth here. So we'll push it out to there. And now what I want to do is I need to decide where I want to be radially. Do I want to be to the left side or the right side of the cylinder? So using the bottom left knob, I can rotate it towards the left and now I can jump radially across, and I'm gonna move it across to here, which is kind of like a maximum point, um, and that's going to uh, give me an overtime of six minutes, which actually says when I did the previous jump and it pushed it up, it didn't take it to the maximum geometric point of the task, which is over here somewhere. It took it right up here to the 12 o'clock position, and the minimum it took it to the six whereas the geometric max and minimum are more along this angle here. So that's moving with long and lat. The other thing we can do is, I said, to put it on distance and bearing. And now if I rotate this knob, we can see that it's moving it straight south. And if I move this knob, it's now moving it straight east. So it's more of a... a north south east west motion instead of along a radial moving it further and closer along that radial and then moving the radial so either one works like i said i usually use distance and bearing because i find it a little bit faster so that's how we can move our point now that we've done that we can see right now our eta is one minute over time that's that's not very good we want it to be uh more than that so as we did before we're going to push this back out to the edge of the uh, edge of the cylinder to try and get ourselves in a position where we're maybe 10 minutes over time. So we're going to take that right out to the edge. And now that it's out to the edge, we'll start rotating it out. We'll get six minutes over time there, um, five minutes over time there. So push that out again. 
And that's the best we're going to do is six minutes overtime somewhere up in this portion of the zone. So with that, I'm going to say OK. And we'll see that we've now adjusted our task delta to six minutes overtime. And my track is now pointing up here instead of to the center. And this black line is the track vector I talked about previously. I think it's a really useful graphic to have on your screen all the time. The other thing I want to talk about affecting the ETA, obviously any of your final glide parameters are going to do that. So your safety McCready is an important value that's going to affect this ETA as well. As we saw previously, I had safety McCready set to zero. So safety McCready can be adjusted in our Q&H and in reserve. We can go into this box and adjust it here. But we can also through the short menus, and if you have the uh, remote stick, you can use the remote stick menu to do this as well. If we come down here to the soft keys, we go to the McCready key, we can see that the first thing is my McCready set to four, and now we can see safe MC. So if I select this, I can now adjust my safety McCready. And what I want to do is I want to adjust that safety McCready up. And you can see as the safety McCready is being adjusted upwards, my time is also increasing. So that safety McCready we can see is having an impact on our task delta because obviously it's telling us that we're going to have to climb higher before we're on final glide to get home. So a lot of information in here. Hope you learned something new about your LX flight computer today. Please visit me online at www.fox1corp.com. If you have any questions, type them into the comments section below. And subscribe to this Fox One Corp YouTube channel to get updates when I post new videos.